Do you need a mountain range, but really, really simple? Mate, got you covered. <laughs> what? So we're gonna be using a free add-on called the Ant Tool, creating materials and making this kind of like all automated so you can make as many as you want. This is all just one piece that I've kind of duplicated into various places. Like and subscribe. Welcome to the video. Where am I going? So for this, we're going to be utilizing the Ant Tool, the Ant add-on, Edit, Preferences, Ant Landscape. Turn that sucker on and let's use it. So from here, Shift A, Mesh, and we'll see that we've got landscape down the bottom. This is where we can generate a landscape. Olé. From here, there is a menu just behind me where we can select, and we've got a whole bunch of presets that we can kind of go through, uh, you know, change the, to the default, change to, uh, I don't know, Mountain 1, so on and so forth. Then we've got a whole bunch of options around here. You know, if we just change the random seed, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to go back to the default for now, and we'll change that seed puppy to something random. Lovely jubblies. Now, if at any point you've lost that menu, you can always press F9 to bring that menu back as long as you haven't done anything else. So for instance, if I go now, add in the cube and press F9, it's gonna give me the properties panel for the cube. Hit the blinds. Awesome. No, wait. Mesh, landscape, I'm gonna bring it back. I wanna add in some more subdivisions. So I'm just gonna go times by two on the subdivisions and we'll do times two on the subdivisions as well, just so that there's more geometry that we can work with. Now it's all about clicking on something else. In the add-ons panel, so N to bring up that side menu, I'm gonna come all the way down to where it says create. I've got a lot of add-ons, yes. We go create. I do have a video on the top 10 free add-ons. Eh, probably a link in the description, go check that out. Clicking on create, after, just after I've created the landscape tool, the landscape, I'm gonna click on mesh. I can come into landscape tools and we can go, Landscape Eroder, I think. That's now done a whole bunch of stuff. Awesome. So over here, we've got a few more options. Uh, light erosion, medium erosion, blah, blah, blah. Let's go, I'm just gonna go medium erosion, because we can. And also, let's go weight from slopes. Boop. Uh, method Z, yes, Oakley Doakley. So that gives us this cool looking thing. Awesome. What do you reckon that could be? I think this is called a splat map. I think. Maybe, perchance. But obviously it goes red to green, depending on kind of like the normal. However, over here, we've got a bunch of vertex groups. So I can like filter through them and we can see where are the avalanche areas, where's the water would pull, scour, deposits, flow rate. That looks nice. A sediment, sediment PCT, whatever that is, capacity and slope. So I'm gonna work off slope. Now the thing is, is we can't use this data in a material because this is what this tutorial is going to be mainly focused on, is the material. What we actually need to do is from weight paints in the top left, we go into vertex paint and we're going to convert this to kind of like a black and white map. So under paint, we go vertex color from weight, yes. And now you can see that it's kind of like black and gray. If we just bring this up a little bit, we've got this thing called color attributes. So from here, I'm gonna call this slope map. Let's now do some stuff. Over into shading. Uh, let's go back into object mode. Uh, we'll just go into material preview, which we are in. I'm gonna go new. From here, we need to bring in some sort of like rock material because we're gonna be combining like a dirt material and a rock material. So we do have two options. I'm gonna come up over into my asset browser. Well, you got probably more options depending on, you know, what do you use? We can use the material 5,000, and that's obviously got 5,000 materials to pick from. So for instance, you know, we've got all our ground materials and tiles. I prefer to use this for more for hard surfaces. There are some good grounds in there as well, but what I'm actually gonna use is the true assets add-on. Um, there are links in the description for this. So from here, we're gonna go into materials. I'm just gonna change it to be uh, 2K settings. Ah, let's go four, let's live a little. Let's go, whoops, standard, there we go. And then I'm just gonna move this down. Can you just move down for me, please? And let's just search for some materials. I'm gonna go, let's do a rock to start off with. And what are we gonna do? Maybe, maybe rock 29. Let that sucker download. And while that's downloading, I'm gonna find maybe a dirt that kind of matches that. Uh, something reddish, 
Maybe, ooh. This one looks like it's got too many sticks, but I might go this one here and we will click and drag that one on there as well. So kind of just um, downloading materials and caching them in a way, just so I can now go back and reference them. Nice, so we've got these two materials. From here, we can see that it looks like crud, which is fine. I'm gonna change the, well, actually, no, sorry, start again. I'm going to grab, well, especially for the true assets, I'm gonna get rid of the bump map and we'll put an, and put the normal back in. There we go. I'm going to select everything besides the material output. And then we'll go into the other material, which is the rock material, and then control V. I'm just gonna place that there for now. From here, we need to mix these two together. So shift A, search, we're gonna go mix, uh, mix shader, and we'll pop that one in there. See, this one can go into the bottom, that one goes there, and then this one will come up to the top. And obviously these two are gonna blend. Now, we don't really see anything at the moment. That's because, let's go gener generated rather than UV and generated. There we go. Let's just change the scale because it's a little bit too big. Uh, go 10, 10, 10, and we'll do the same up here. 10, 10, 10. Okay, sweet, easy. Now it's time to merge. I don't know what this is, but we're merging. <laughs> From here, Shift A, input, Attribute slope map. Now slope map is, when we come down into this data, attributes, is there? No, color attributes. So that's our slope map that we renamed earlier. So if you have to, scroll back on what we did. Color goes into the factor, and now we have the two materials mixing. Obviously we've got rock, we've got some dirt. Let's throw in a color ramp. So search, search, color ramp. Where are you? Spelt like an American. Now we can adjust how much, I mean, which one's the dirt? So that's dirt. So I can flip it around and then we can have more dirt coming in and then there's our rock. Now let's say we want to add extra map. So we kind of want a third material to come through. A little bit more funky work. So over in the color attributes, we need to create a new color attribute and I'm gonna call this uh, flow. Pfft. I don't know what that was. Also, if you're enjoying this video, can you hit subscribe? I'm trying to get that 100,000 mark and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. That was a long pause. <laughs> Back into weight painting. I'm gonna select mm, flow rate. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with flow rate. Up the top here, we've got our flow rate color attribute. So for instance, obviously if I went, oh no, that's that one there, sorry. Now going into vertex paint, We've got the option of flow or slope map or flow. I do want to click on the little camera icon to make sure that that is active so that when we go paint, vertex color from weight, we do that. Let's now go back into object mode. Let's maybe find a darker material. I don't know, like that one there looks pretty good. There's that. I'm just going to add in a cube, throw it onto that. Ugh. No, I'm not using that one. Eh, that one will do for now. Once again, we're going to copy everything, control, uh, get rid of the bump map. Copy everything, delete, come back into this material, <laughs> make it bigger. You go there, good sir. Let's just grab all this stuff. I'm just going to move it up a bit, just make my life a little bit easier. Then we will go into another shader editor. So you go into there, please. You come down there, well, there, please. Let's grab this one and that'll get plugged into the mix shader. So we kind of have our three materials combined like that. Let's go shift A, input attributes, flow, put that one into there, into color, and then hopefully now we see another material come through. There we go. Let's maybe add 10. Did I do the right one? Yeah. Ah, and also change it to generate it. But I mean, this is all depends on how, uh, you know, you do the materials there, but you can see how we've now combined three different materials with two different vertex groups to create something pretty sick now also we're not finished hold your horses now obviously we've created one mountain range however we want more yeah yeah dude easy as anything i'm gonna go alt d to do a duplicate of this but it's more of a link so we're not doubling up the file all i'm gonna do is just start scaling it differently so if we go shift d and then i can go like yeah get stuff massive mountain range 
maybe a bit bigger. Something like that. And then if we really want to make it nice and can make a nice flat surface, then encounters, 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 encounter. What is the word, word, um, that for something that takes over everything. Cumbers? Encumber. Oh, I don't know if that was the word I was looking for. So anyway, and then this is where we can start grabbing all these assets. And obviously we can make multiple different variations of this. And this is where, this is where we can look at reference images and such and start building up um, what an actual mountain range will look like. Because I know if there's anyone here that's doing geography will be like, no, that's not possible. You can't do it that way. I know, because I suck and I haven't looked at any reference photos. But I'm more showing you how to do this. Subscribe. But don't forget, you can always just repeat this process once you create those two color attribute things. Done. Copy, paste, and you can make as many as you want. So...